Hi, welcome to your channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant. I'm Dr. Ghosh and I'm your host and I'm back once again to share a very inspirational story with you. Today is India's 73rd Independence Day. And I want to share with you a truly inspirational story of a freedom fighter, rebel, visionary, social activist who made a difference to us pre-independence and post-independence. Friends, before we go on to the story of this truly inspirational freedom fighter, could I request you to please subscribe to my channel Generous, Gracious and Gallant so that you are updated about every inspirational video which I release. As you are aware, Generous, Gracious and Gallant channel was set up with dual purposes. One, to share daily inspiration with you. Number two, to share the best stories of mankind with you. Therefore, it's very apt today that on India's 73rd Independence Day, I share a story with you about a freedom fighter, a woman freedom fighter, Kamla Devi Chattopadhyaya, a freedom fighter, a rebel, a visionary, a social activist. A lady with a streak of independence who made a difference to the freedom struggle during the pre-independence days and a lady who made a difference post-independence to the refugees and to Indian arts, craft and culture. Kamla Chattopadhyaya was born on 3rd April 1903 at Mangalore in present-day Karnataka. Her father was a district collector and her mother Girjabai was from a landed family who had a lost a large track of landlords in Karnataka. She is said to have in inherited her rebellious and independent streak from her mother. Living with young Kamla Devi was also their paternal grandmother who was very well versed in the Puranas, the ancient Indian texts and the epics of in, uh, Indian history. Thus, Kamla Devi got her independent streak and knowledge of Indian Puranas and epics from her maternal side. She was a young, as a young girl, a very exceptional student and she exhibited courage and determination even at a very young age. Her parents, that is her mother Girjabai and her father Anantayaya Dareshwar were friends with many intellectuals and freedom fighters as her father was the district collectorate of Mangalore. He had a white circle and this intermingling with the inter intellectuals and freedom fighters made young Kamla Devri very patriotic. As was the trend in those days, she was married off in 1917 at a very young age of 14 years and unfortunately got widowed two years later when her husband Krishna Rao died. Later, three years later, she remarried Harindranath Chattopadhyay, who had come together based on their mutual interest in arts and crafts. When she remarried, there was a lot of hue and cry, as at that point of time, Society was very much against widow remarriage. However, she went ahead with it 
and she and her husband Helen who were both very much interested in art crafts and films produced a lot of plays and skits together young kamala devi also acted in two kannada movies including the first silent movie ever made in kannada and she also acted in three films including the hindi film tansen when her husband Harin decided to move on to London. Kamala Devi followed Harin to London, and there she got admitted and received a diploma in sociology. Eventually, after some years of marriage, they both drifted apart, and Kamala Devi, breaking from tradition, filed for divorce. When she was still in london in 1923 she heard about the non cooperation movement and she came back to india to join gandhi ji on his non cooperation movement she joined the seva dal and gandhi an organization for social upliftment she was given the charge of the women section where she went around the country encouraging women of all ages young and old to join as sevikas to support in india's freedom movement in 1926 young kamala devi became the first woman in india to stand for a provincial legislative assembly elections she stood for the madras provincial legislative assembly elections and despite her short period which she got for campaigning for it she lost only by a thin margin of 55 votes however she did in those days of 1926 when diversity and freedom for women and all were not the buzzwords they were as they are today and women were kept at home not educated she fought for and a legislative assembly seat in 1927 she founded the all india women's conference awic she became the first organizing secretary of the all india women's conference this was expanded throughout the country with multiple branches and she worked with this all india women's conference as the first organizing secretary for legislative reforms she traveled throughout the country and demanded for social reforms she set up various educational institutions across the country for women and run by women the most prominent among them being the present day lady irwin college of home sciences in new delhi in the 1930s prior to independence she was appointed by gandhi in the seven member lead team for the salt satyagraha at bombay kamla's devi who was like i already said had a strong streak of independence and was a rebel she she scandalized the local society by her widow remarriage and during 1930 she additionally went up to the bombay magistrate and asked him whether she would whether the that magistrate would buy the freedom salt which they had made on 26 january 1930 she also gained widespread media attention when during a scuffle she held on to the national flag and did not allow it to fall to the ground despite receiving many attacks on her body by the british officers lati charging at that point of time in 1940 during world war 2 she had gone to england to campaign for india's independence and when world war 2 was declared she toured europe and the other countries of the world asking and campaigning for support for india's independence after the end of world war 2 
when india gained independence in 1947 as you are all aware it was one of the bloodiest nights in world history it is said over millions of people lost their life in the communal riots and in the transfer of hindus from pakistan and from of muslims from india to pakistan there were many atrocities and human rights atrocities committed during this transfer a sad day but it led to many refugees in india she took up upon herself to set right the state of the refugees from the western front western frontier in india she took it upon herself to convince nehru ji to allow her to set up a town a, a town in the outskirts of delhi the present day faridabad town to set up all refugees there she set up a town for 50000 refugees called it faridabad and was single handedly responsible for the rehabilitation of these refugees and also she felt that she can give them jobs only by using their skill which they already had so she set up skill rehabilitation centers for these re refugees and revived the ancient indian handicrafts and handy looms and paid special care for their health facilities and also for setting up home for these refugees nehru ji decided that he wanted to go up for mass production factories for mass employment but kamla devi was opposed to this and she felt that it is better that indian handicrafts be encouraged and she set up towards this multiple craft museums throughout the country to hold an archive indigenous arts and crafts of india towards this an example is the theater craft museum in new delhi she also instituted awards for master craftsmen she set up the central cottage industries exporium throughout india she was a woman much ahead of her times much much ahead of her times she was determined courageous well educated a rebel and outspoken she was instrumental in setting up the all india handicraft board the crafts council of india and she was also the first president of the world crafts council for the asia pacific region in 1964 the natya institute of kathak and choreography at bangalore was started by her single handedly she also set up the national school of drama headed the sangeet natya academy and became a member of unesco mind you all of this in an era much before women were encouraged to step out and make a difference she did all of this despite much opposition in the era of 30s 40s 50s 60s even today we are talking about women empowerment and diversity that today in 1920s she did all of this in 1930s and in those decades 1930s to 1970s 80s truly inspirational woman with guts and determination she wrote two acclaimed autobiography inner recesses and outer spaces which were published in 1986 she died on 29 october 1988 in bombay aged 85 years this truly inspirational woman rebel freedom fighter social activist and visionary was awarded multiple times she won the padma bhushan 19 in 1955 the padma vibhushan in 1987 the
the Ramsey Magsaysay Award for Community Leadership in 1966. 1974, she won the highest award given by the Sangeet Natya Academy, that is the Fellowship of the Sangeet Na Natya Academy. And in 1977, UNESCO awarded her for promotion of handicrafts. Shanti Niketan, the institute set up by Ramanandran Tagore, the Indian Nobel laureate, awarded her with the highest award given by Shanti Niketan. Kamla Devi, Kamla Devi Chattopadhyaya, was truly a inspirational human being, a freedom fighter, a rebel, a social activist. a visionary she was the first indian woman at, at arrested by the british for her patriotic activities against british india rulers the britishers today on india's 73rd independence day it is a privilege to take out this video on this truly truly inspirational lady Thank you for hearing this inspirational story about Kamla Devi Chattopadhyaya Friends if you like my inspirational stories please do subscribe to my channel generous gracious and gallant so that you will receive notifications of every video which I have released and for those of you who are already my subscribers thank you till we meet again with another inspirational story good luck all the best take care